said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. But guess what? Why are we? This is the thing. And, and listen, I love everybody. But it's getting to a point now where I'm tired of everybody quoting these scriptures, but nobody living nothing. If he never going to leave you or forsake you, why are you acting like it, though? <laughs> why are we acting like he left? Woo! We're not showing up to the building because we act like he left. We're not paying tithes and building up the kingdom because we act like he left. No, he never left us. But why are we walking around like he did? I got to a point where I said, God, if you never give me this or you never give me that, God, I just want to love you. Because I want to enter into your heaven. And I know it's a prepared place for a prepared people. But I got to be prepared. And one of the preparations is going, look, him is the real love. Him is your first love. Not if you give me this, I love you. Well, I've been in every desperate situation. I see the fine man one time, y'all. And look, I'm a woman, so I can only talk about a man. I can't talk about a man because I'm not a man. I'm a woman, okay? So I saw this fine man. I mean, he was gorgeous. I mean, everything, y'all. He was suited down, man. And I was like, Father God. So I was like, okay, Lord, <laughs> that might be the one. So then the Lord had gave me instructions. I was in this city. He said, don't go to no churches, right? But I was like, I could just go check him out. You know, he seemed like he got it together. Man, I went to that church. I had a horrible experience. Let me tell you. <laughs> I went in there and they locked the door. I said, Father God, they done locked the door up in here. And it was just a lot of religious going on. And the Lord, and I said, Lord, you told me because I was looking for love in all the wrong places. I wasn't full of him. I was full of me. I thank God for his saving grace. I thank God that he transformed my mind. I thank God that he renewed my mind. I thank God that I was open to his will and that I'm not lost. I thank God for a savior that's gracious and forgivable and kind. Who, who, I love when I hear Minister Deborah say, who wouldn't serve a God like that? But as many of us that won't. Many of us that not really run and gun hold for the things of Jesus. Because we are full of a lot of other things. Today I'm asking you, are you going to empty out the other things to get God to pour in? Because he's willing. He want to fill your cup. He wants you to be whole in him. He wants you to be great in him. He wants you to be, he wants you to believe in him so he can do what you believe. Because guess what? He's only moved by faith. He's not moved by tears, emotions. He's moved by faith. And the less faith we have, the less he's going to move. If you don't speak it, if you don't believe in the impossible being possible, how can you get it? If you don't believe the incredible, this is the lover now that we're talking about. That's why he wants you to commune with him and that you look that he be your lover. So that he can pour out those things that you desire and want. God is, he's in the business of giving you what you need and what you want. That's the kind of God we serve. It's not just all, oh, just all biblical words. Sometimes he just want to bless you with something you love. I remember when I first dog. Now, I wasn't for dogs being in the house because I was raised dogs be outside, right? But the Lord was dealing with me about getting a dog. And so I mentioned to my daughter one day, I said, we should get a dog. Now, I didn't know she was going to be like ABC, boom. You know, I, I was thinking we was going to go through like a little therapeutic time. <laughs> like, give me a few weeks, a month. I just said it out loud. Can we just kind of like pace ourselves? Nah, baby, we had a dog next weekend. <laughs> Spoke of last weekend, we had a dog. So anyway, with this dog, God began to, this dog was ordained for that season. His name was Nor, uh, Nordic. And he looked a little bit like Bentley, but he was, he was, a little, he was bigger. And th yeah, he was bigger. He bought that. I mean, he, he was huge. He was big. But I love, and he was so sweet and very obedient. And what I love that he kept my son out the house. Because my son would like to come through my window sometimes. He was going through a rough season. And boy, Nordic, one day he didn't know we had a dog and the dog came. <laughs> Try to open up the window. The dog, boy, Nordic, boy, Nordic, I mean, Nordic passed me going down the stairs. <laughs> and boy, I knew it, Nordic was barking, and he was like, they don't want to got a dog. <laughs> yeah, they keep you to come through the front door instead of the window. But anyway, <laughs> with this dog, 
God, I mean, one day, I didn't know that at that time I had, I had a diagnosis that they were saying I had. And one day, Nordic was just at my door and then finally he pushed my door in and he licked me to wake up. And my blood sugar had dropped so low. And I said, wow. And this dog, I mean, y'all, this dog was just exceptional for the season. Like he just had a way about himself. And I'm telling you, one day my daughter was working all night and I had to, I, I was working days at the time and I came home and she was asleep and he was sitting there standing attention like anybody come near this bed, it's over with. I was like, calm down. I'm the owner of this house. <laughs> but this dog was just ordained. God would give you things when you don't fall in love with it, but still in love with him. See, God is looking for some of us to fall in love with him, but we still full of self. This is what I deserve. This is what I want. This is what I should have. And it's too much of you, so he can't even give you him and give you all that what comes with him. Amen. Healing comes with him. Amen. Restoration comes with him. Look, long life comes with him. Ooh, look, look, he can touch a man to marry you because that comes with him. Ooh, favor comes with him. But some of us are so full of self, we, can't, we don't have him, and we can't get access to what he promised. Ooh, somebody better say amen in here. Trying to help some of you out here. Amen, we got to get full of him. When you get, look, when you let this world go, You'd be like, wow, I should have done And this is, this is what my attitude was, y'all. I was like, dang, you mean I could have been had this? <laughs> but I, I, I was wasting time because I was trying to do it the world way. Ooh, the world's way. I was trying to do it. My parents couldn't give me what they didn't have. They had a form of godliness. God said, let those forms go for transformation. <laughs> See, God expects you to get up once you re realize that he's real and take on his understanding and his revelation so you can be renewed, so that you can be filled of him, full of him, to the point you burping in the spirit. One day, I was on my knees crying out to God, and he said, you finish. I was like, wow. That means you can pray so much to the Holy Spirit releases you to go. Woo. Get filled with him. Get hungry from him. Some of us in the state we in because we full of mess, drama, backbiting, selfishness, idleness. And God said, I can't even give you all of what I have for you because you're not fooling me yet. Fall back in love with him. It's worth it. He's worthy. His promises are yea and amen. Yeah, yeah. Whew. Ephesians chapter 3. Let's get here. Amen. Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Did we already read that? Okay, well, let's jump in here. In today's scripture, Paul is praying for all of us to be fully, to look, be fully committed fully in love with Christ, to understand how to grasp the fullness of God. But it's impossible to grasp the fullness of God without grasping the fullness of the love of God. For when we grasp his love for us, we, become, we can become rooted, established in him. We can become rooted and established in him as our solid foundation, our solid rock, our every, look, our lasting water. That means you won't thirst because the water won't stop. His good, you ever hear them the songs and say, he overtake me? God is saying, I want to overtake you. That you have unspeakable joy. How many of you experiencing depression in here? Sadness and hopelessness because you're not full of him. There's something that's blocking your fullness. God wants your cup to run over. He wants you to be joyful. He wants you to be able to laugh even at the enemy. Some of us, we're not even laughing at the enemy. We're taking it personal. It's not your fight. It's already been said. Woo. All you got to do is speak the word. And guess what? That devil got to flee. Come on. All you got to do is declare that Jesus is Lord and I belong to you, God. All you got to do is cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. You're, look, they're, 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 you're precious in his sight. 
But see, you, that's, that comes with his love. That comes with being in love with him. That comes with you making time for him. Not to get what you want. Not to hear God, but to spend time with him. See, some of us go to him because we want a word to make ourselves sound anointed and appointed. Some of us want to just cast out demons, but we don't even want to cast out our own ones. But God wants you to be so in love with him, so full of him, that you know how to orchestrate his, his ways so well. So I was telling them on Thursday night, every time somebody would give me a word, man, to God, it would be like, you got enemies. I said, Jesus, what's going on with all this? I got enemies. I mean, you got enemies. I mean, everybody would prophesy, I see enemies all around me. I said, oh, Father God. I mean, can somebody tell me that the angels <laughs> are, are, are walking with me something, you know, give me, give me some hope. <laughs> so then, <laughs> then the Lord began to tell me, he said, Andre, what I mean by that is, you, you, I'm for you, and the heavenly host is for you, but there are some people that's not truly your friends. They're, they're not wishing the best for you. But remember, I get vengeance. Remember, I get vengeance. We don't have to get vengeance on no one. That's God's job. Well, he wants you to be so full of him that you're focused on him while he deals with you anyways. So I'm not concerned about them more than I'm concerned about being in his presence. And being his daughter and being his son. Amen. So I want you to know Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 through 27. Jesus states Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 27. I got this one. Jesus states that those who hear his word and do them are wise builders. They have built their home on rock solid foundation. The winds howl and the rain comes. Even a flood comes, but the house stands firm. Those who hear his word but fail to live by them are foolish builders. Now, you might know what, what it's saying here is when you're full of God and you're in love with him and you, you, you are meditating on his word and you're seeking him, you're building wisely. You got a firm foundation. And you know, I, this is where apostle had y'all pray for apostle. You can tell me your house is firm, but if I can't see it, then I don't believe it. Because you got a lot of people, I notice you got people who can quote scriptures I'm talking about. from Look, Genesis the revelation. But when it comes down to standing firm, your word don't mean nothing. Amen. Your word should mean something. I was, and I think, you know what? I understand. You know how sometimes you question different questions on God? Why am I in this family? Have anybody did that other than me? <laughs> like, question like, why are you in this family? I'm full crazy. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Okay, it's me. I'm by myself. So sometimes, you know, you know, it just gets serious like that. And so one day, one day the Lord said, well, you can take from this that you was raised that your word is your bond. And I can remember as a child my mother would always say that to me. Andre, your word is your bond. And when you say it, you do it. And that, I mean, I can remember eighth grade, 10th grade. I mean, because, you know, you know, teenagers usually lie. Well, you know, I'm going to sister's house, but you really going to meet that boy? <laughs> and she'd be like, and she, it's like she knew I was lying. She'd be like, your word is your bond. I'm like, God. You know, that just made it, just killed it. I can't go. <laughs> My friend's like, you're scary, yes. <laughs> my dad. You know, that's why I thought, God, why am I in this family? Because <laughs> he came off, you know, woo. <laughs> but God let me know that there were things and nuggets that were planted in me. And that's why I was in that family. So you have to understand that God knows everything. And he, know, he knows why he does what he do. And I'm just killing all the thoughts in the, in the, in the, in the I, can, I can see the thoughts. I can see your mind rambling. I can see you thinking about certain things. But you got to understand, don't question him. Just serve him. Just love him. Just love him. Some of y'all have been waiting on some things, and God is saying, if you get full of me. But you got you to kill the culture. Ooh. You got to kill the culture. Some of us were raising some cultures that that, that thing is it's a soul tie. And, 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 and you having to having a hard time cutting, allowing God to cut that thing with his supernatural scissors. But God said, if you're truly giving to him and say, God, this is not your way. Come on. God, any ways in me that's not like you, God, I give you permission to cut it. 
Because some of us, it's culture. The way my mama did it, the way the, 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 the culture I was in, the city I was raised, we did it this way. So what? God said in this season, you can't do it that way. God is not a man that he should lie. If he said he called you, then in his due season, he will do what he said he's going to do. But till then, you're going to do it his way because you're in love with him. You are full of him and you want to please him, not you. Let's get rid of this self-God. Let's get rid of this greed, God. Let's get rid of me, my, and the way I was raised. I was, listen here, I was raised on a dirt road. We were so dirty, all you could see is dust in the pictures. It was dirty. And we were smiling. <laughs> we were smiling like we was the, the stuff. But I went back and looked at those pictures. But it was all for my good. Because when I think about that and saw where, where God has brought me, I said, God, I thank you. So who is us to determine how our outcome is going to be? It's up to God. And we have to surrender. We don't have to. We don't really have to. But if you don't, it's not going to work out because everything that you believe in God for, you ain't got to be a trickster. You ain't got to be trifling. You don't have to do that. If you be full of God, he'll give it to you. What did he tell David? He said, David, if it wasn't created already, I'll create it for you. You got to know, no man, no husband, no job, whatever, you don't have to be trifling. You don't have to be trickery. You don't have to be a backbone. You don't have to do none of that because if you're full of God, you attract everything that he is. And one thing he is is a promise keeper. And he can look, he he said he's gonna be look, he didn't create he let you know if I can give him his Eve, I can give you your Adam. Oh my God. But you got to be full of him. See, I realized God told me you'll be married in five years after the first divorce, right? And I'm not gonna go into all that. It was God ordained, God bless it. And then after five years, I was like, God, I ain't married yet. He said, You ain't full of me. I have to get full of him so that I can be the woman of God that God needed me to be. The wife that God needed me to be. Lord knows I need, I need to be saved. I need to be where I'm at now. Because marriage can be challenging for those who are. And if you're not full of God, you might not even give them God. Are we there today? I want you to be full of God. Let's keep going here. It says in John... Chapter 4, verse 4 to 14, you can write it down or go there. But whoever drink of this water, or drink of, of this water, that I shall give him, shall never thirst again. Some say thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. We may think in our human flesh that the things of the world will satisfy us, but they never do. For if these lesser temporary love of the world satisfy us, then we will have no need for our God. His love is the only love that will fill us full. It is not until we experience and know God's love that surpasses all knowledge that we will truly be made full. So when God was talking about knowing parts, he was talking about revelation. But when he was talking about his fullness, he talking about your seek. See, when you seek God, he gives you just what you need. When you're consistently seeking him, not going to him for things, moving everything out the way and say, God, here I am. Here I am to serve you. Here I am to worship you. Here I am to honor you. Here I am. We got to understand that we're here to worship God. We're here to honor God. And this is why we have to be full of him. This is why we have to be pregnant with him. This is why we ought to be birthing him. We may think in our human flesh that the things of the world will satisfy us, but it won't. Let's go to Psalms 118, verse 8. Psalms 118, verse 8. Hallelujah. 
We're going to have to get the man of God to come to Bible study because he want to talk in church. <laughs> Psalms 118, verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. It is better to put trust in God than anything in the world. And when you put trust in man, you're going to always be let down. You got to understand that we got to get back to making God our first love. It's not only just what you say out of your mouth. It's your actions. It's what you live. It's what you say. When you're full of God, that's what comes out. When you're mad, that's what comes out. Okay, God, how do I handle this? I'm not going to go back to the way I was taught that's not of God. I'm not going to do things to people that I know God said what he blessed man can't curse. And if you're a human being, we shouldn't be cursing him. We should be interceding for them. Oh, my God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 says, so do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. Look at this. When you got confident in God, when you full of him, some of us are full of sleep, slugger. Ooh, we won't we won't we won't prepare for Sunday to save our lives. Mm mm mm. But then we won't give me God, give me God. I want this God. Why this? Why this? Why that? Are you full of Him? Are you looking? Look, are you making or preparing or, or even trying to make God your first love? Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 says, I know that it is to be, I, I, excuse me, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I'm reading the NIV. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. We ought to not turn from God when we're going through changes, guys. We ought to be full of him. Ephesians 3.12 says, in him and through faith in him, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. See, when you in him, when you love him, when your motive is to be in him, you will approach him with confidence. Father, today I come against sluggishness. I come against sleepiness in the name of Jesus. That, Lord God, that you will wake us up, God, that we'll be able to comprehend and hear what you're saying this morning. I thank you for ears to hear and a heart to receive this morning in the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 26 is for the Lord will be your confidence. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 26 for those who write it down. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot being look keep your foot from being snared when we trust God when we are full of him when we're in love with him look we won't look we won't fall we won't be snared we won't be listen there's things that we look as a fall is really not a fall those things is to really wake us up some of us are need to stumble so we can hit our heads that will make us see things the way it really is. Come on, somebody. You know, you can say, oh, no. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6 said, but Christ is faithful as the son over God's house. Ooh. And we are in his house. If indeed we hold firm to our confidence in the hope in which, look, look, in the hope in which we glory. We got to hold confidence to this walk. We got to hold confidence to being steadfast. And we got to hold confidence in knowing that being in God's house is where he wants us. This is how we stay in love with God, by doing godly things. <laughs> Don't let nobody fool you. Stay in love. Being absent and looking on TV is not the same as being in presence. You want to show up and be present with God. My goodness. And I know we have jobs. And I know always have life and families and all these things. But guess what? You're no good to them if you're not in love with Christ. You can't help them the way that you can help them if you're not in Christ. So I understand. But you know what? I got to a point when I was working at Northside. One day I said, this got to change. My grandson was an infant at the time. And I wanted to be the one to burp him and give him his bottles and change his diapers. I wanted to be at church and I wanted to take him to church. So I said, Lord, I was working at Northside, 7 P to 7 A. I was working fr Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, be off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And at first I was working Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, be off Tuesday, Wednesday. So then I said, Lord, this got to change. And I prayed for about maybe three days about it. Fast, prayed, cried out to God. Went to my job and I said, 
I don't know. I said, I just have a brand new, brand new grandbaby and I want to be there. And next thing I know, she come back to my office and say, okay, you all Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm like, wow, God, you show in this. And I was able to be there for him, take him to church, serve God, and do the things that I wanted to do. So I'm telling you that God has given us a power and authority when we're in love with him. When we fool him, he gives us ideas, he gives us favor. So it might not happen yet, but are you proposing it? Are you petitioning? Some of us are not petitioning. We want it our way. We still feel a self. But this, uh, this is what it's going to be. But you say that you're in love with Christ. It's not just a statement. It's an action word. It's an action word. And we, he, look, he gave Daniel the power to petition. He gave Elijah the power to speak. Ooh, he gave Abraham the, look, the, sep- the power to separate the Red Sea. You got more than what you realize when you're full of him. But you got to be full of him. Listen, I love my children. I love my family. But there are some, they say, that this is the saying, apostle don't come around often. But did not he tell the man of God, go? Sometimes God going to send you places where you're not going to be able to participate in some family things. But you need to be okay with it. Why? Because of God that created heaven and earth is asking you to do a thing. Why would you say no? Why would you not do it? Today, my question is, are you looking for love in the right places? Are you in love with the right person? Is he your first love? You got to ask yourself this because nobody can answer this but you. That personal relationship is determining. You can be, because you know, I, 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 I'm trying to stay off this, but I keep hearing this. Someone was in love with addiction. That's what we're in love with. We're in love with addictions. We're in love with sex. We're in love with drugs. We're in love with all these different things, but we're not in love with Christ. If you just let me do this, God, I'll I'll do this. But then you wonder why the things that you desire, he can't do it for you. Because you'll kill it. You'll hurt it. You'll wound it. Some of us got offense. We're full of offense. We're full of unforgiveness. We're full of past issues. My mama did this, and my daddy did that, and the dog did that, and the so-and-so did this. And God is saying, am I not the God that promised forgiveness? Am I not the God that heals? Am I not the God that delivers? Am I not the God that, look, that healed bearing wounds? Am I not the God that opened blind eyes? Am I not the God that separated the Red Sea? Am I not that God? So why are we still carrying this luggage on our back of who did what to us? And we're full of big more than we're full of his love. I'm just not going to do that no more. Because you're still full of unforgiveness. I remember I was in the, I was in the car with somebody and they started the praying. They was cursing people. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ho, hold on. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? No, that's the way I pray. I said, no, that's not the right way to pray. The Bible said, bless your enemies. Bless those who despitefully use you. This is what we're supposed to be doing. 